it was the goddamn Lakers versus, I'm pretty sure, the Spurs, right? The score is tied up. It's not even a second left on the clock. It's like 0 0.7 <laughs> seconds left on the clock, right? This is what he lives by. No, this is what I live by, bro. It's 0 0.7 seconds left on the clock. They inbound the ball to Derek Fisher, right? But mind you, Kobe's on the team too. But they inbound the ball to Derek Fisher. He catches the ball midair, twists, shoots it, releases it, lands the three point, and wins the game. The last zero points. Insert that clip. Four seconds, bro. All my sports fans, look it up. He inballed the he inballed, inballed the ball, caught it, shot it, boom, won the game. That's my fucking. It's called the Gary Fisher theory, bro. I live my life by that. I might, I, you know, I may be fourth quarter, 0 0.7 seconds left, but I'm going to inbound the ball and I'm going to make the three every fucking time, bro. I'm Jamaican. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I might as well do a Jamaican flag colorway. I'm not going to lie. We should have did something to differentiate the dice a little more because I feel like you can barely even see the dice on these, no? Yeah, a little bit. Like, yeah, I feel like I should have... You live and you learn. I feel like they still look great, but like I should have definitely differentiated a little bit. I was just wondering, was it your idea to start the shoes or was it Ku's idea to start the shoes? Because I've heard this answer, I've heard the story a little bit before because I remember hearing like you were like, he suggested something and you were like, fuck no, but it wound oh, up man. working. I'm gonna give you the long version, not even the short version. Yeah, let's get that. I met Ku, John, in like 2014, 2015, at this after hours called the overpass we met this night and we just we just clicked like we just had very similar interests we dressed kind of the same we wore the same size so we would buy and trade stuff off each other all the time we had a lot of very similar interests so the when, cool and house for an origin story when we became cool he started made and i started rapping and doing the podcast and all that around the same time so i watched him go, pivot from trying to be a brand trying to compete like us. We all competing with each other, really. So he pivoted and was like, I'm going to sell to everybody by, through my blanks. And I watched him go through that transition. And I feel like I kind of went through the same transition with like trying to be a rapper, trying to compete in the rap space, and then realizing that like I was just much more than just being a rapper. Yeah. I got the personality to do other things, and I have the ideas to do other things too. So I feel like we just always kind of were on the same trajectory in our own different ways. And we always meant to collaborate or to do something together. And it just, we just never did, right? Until one day, he just called me randomly. And now, one thing I could say about John, and we could leave this in there, he's a very straightforward businessman. So, you know, when you have uh, bigger clients, like, you know, I'm gonna give the specifics. Yeah, Chinatown Market was doing a thing with Foot Locker, mm -hmm. and they were getting the blanks from Made. And you know, they're, they're getting 20,000 hoodies, 10,000 sweats so and stuff like that. that was start, really. No, no, I'm not saying that's the start, but I'm saying, like, when, when you're doing stuff like that, when people come on, like, yo, let me get 20 hoodies, let me get 100 hoodies, you kind of are, like, standoffish. You don't really give a fuck, right? Yeah. So I feel like he used to kind of be like that with people sometimes. And uh, he actually told me specifically that this guy, he showed up to get some hoodies. He was kind of blowing them off. And he said, right before he walked out the door, he was like, by the way, I used to work for a Creative Recreation and for Greedy Genius, which are both sneaker companies. I from used to ride for Greedy Genius. Really? Yeah. So this guy, I guess he used to work for them. So he was like, if you ever want to make your own shoe, I have the plugs, got a warehouse plug in, in Portugal, let me know. So he was buying made blanks. He, he was okay, buying made blanks. He got shooed away he was, buying, he was buying made blanks for a Skid Row fashion show for fucking David uh, Sebastian. Yeah. So that's what he was doing. And then he he sold he sold Koo on the if you trying to make your own shoe. So Koo calls me immediately. Now he could have called 20 other people before. He called me first. And you know what I just thought about right now? You know how I don't be answering the phone sometimes? What why if did I you, didn't Yeah, why? What, what if I didn't answer the phone that time and he called somebody else and he made this with somebody else? It would have never came out the it would, same. It would have not worked out the same, you're right. And also if I didn't have him, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't work out the same. No, either. yeah. So yeah, man, listen, we at the warehouse right now. We got them loading up everything on the truck. You know what I'm saying? We got shoes galore. My boy, my boy getting it right, getting it fixed up in there. How many shoes we got on here, that. you think? How many pairs? There's a lot. God damn. We got to get that on the phone. These ones. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do it right now. Get that on the phone, they're going out. Get that on the 
Yeah, good. All right. Oh, oh, it's going down. No orders falling off the back of the truck. You see, hey, you see my boy, he loaded it up on the truck, right? No orders falling off. No, no, no. no orders falling off the back of the, look, look. Yeah, this, man. This, <laughs> feel that, man. He doing it. Let's go. So he calls me and we start like kind of going back and forth like on ideas and stuff like that. And one of the first things he said pissed me off so bad that I almost hung up the phone <laughs> and I almost didn't want to do it. He was like, his first suggestion was, what if we do like a lightning bolt, like the revenge storm oh, that's on an what it air was. force, on an air force. I slammed my fucking hand on the desk and I was like, you listen here. If we're going to do something, it's going to be of our brains, not of fucking somebody else's brain and somebody else's brain and putting that together. That's crazy. So by the time we got off the phone, we came up with the high rollers name. It was either like high rollers or jackpot, something like that. And it's funny because I have a, I have a little notebook and I have all this shit written down in it of like the different names and all that stuff. By the time we got off that phone call, we had colorways ready to go yeah. already. We tried some like almost Asian looking shit where it was like dice with like flames coming like all around it. Like I, I got a couple of different other references in my phone from the first one. But by the time we got off that first phone call, we already had the name and was ready to do the colorways off rip. What was the first colorway? I think one of the first ones we were trying to do was like this like almost kind of how the all-stars were without the stars like it was like blue it was blue with like the red dice well no, no it, it was blue with the red swoosh so this is this is one thing we had to change during production when we finally well, we started it so when we would do mock-ups we would keep the dice white black and red and then do the swoosh behind it a different color but we, once we start with the manufacturer, they're like, no, you can't do that. Got to, not, this whole piece has to be it'll one never, color. Yeah, it'll never come through. Yeah. It has to be one color or, or like, you know, like one color mainly and then you could outline it different color. So. Yeah, because yours is embossed. Exactly. Then we were trying to do the two-tone on the sole where like, you know, the, the midsole is this color and the bottom of the sole is another color. It also was like, nope, you got to buy a whole custom mold for each size. Yep. So it was like, I'm not gonna lie, it was a lot of capital up front. And we, dude, we were sampling for like a year straight before we even got, I remember getting the first couple samples and being like, I was too excited about this. Like, this is not it. Like, this is, like, if this is how it's coming out, like. Shoes is a weird game, because everybody got different lasts and all that shit, you know what I mean? They just fit different. Like, you Bro. could look the same, but. Listen, it took us a year to make sure, we, we probably went through like three, four samples mm -hmm for it to get to that point first. And it's funny because when people talk shit, they just they just think that you just ripped apart an Air Force. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's, I'm like, that's what I was saying about the, the shoe last. Like, okay, you went to Portugal. Those people probably don't make bootleg Air Forces. You know what I mean? They had to make a last for you. And they had to, you know, they, like now these kids can go on Alibaba and be like, okay, boom, you already are making That wasn't Air a Force. thing back then. Exactly. So that's why I was gonna say, this is all still while you're at No Jumper, mm -hmm. like just kind of podcasting, whatever. Yeah. Well, we got stickers right here. Stickers, stickers, shoes, shoes, clothes. A lot of this shit is fucking made clothes, man. Oh, it's all blanks back here? A lot of this back uh, here, yeah. Okay. But this is us right here. House phone's tied to the mob, bro. Look at this. Listen, man. Made. I'm, made, if we made, made. made. This if we is... locked in, ain't no switching up. But yeah, man, so, uh, Basically, my business partner that I run High Rollers with, he's the owner, founder of Made. And um, yeah, man, just seeing this operation go from his living room and from the first warehouse to like where we're at now and what he's doing now with this is crazy, bro. It's just, it's, I'm, I'm fucking inspired. I'm just happy to say that I'm even a part of this in any type of way. And I'm so blessed that he's my partner and that I could take, you know, from Made to build high rollers up with it too, you feel me? So like, it's just all, it's all a fucking blessing, man. I would not be able to do this if it wasn't for my boy, John, man. Shout out to my boy, John, my boy, Koo. Love you, bro. Appreciate you, man. At the time, this was, this is during 20, this is 2020. I had dropped my last music project, like 2019. Did the whole Rolling Loud day in Vegas. Like music was actually finally starting to pay off for me at that time. Like I had been doing it for a couple years. People kept telling me, you want to be taken serious as a rapper? You can't do the podcast shit. Yeah. And I was kind of like taking that to head, like like taking that in and being like, damn, maybe they're right. And I was kind of trying to step back from No Jumper a little bit. Then I performed at Rolling Loud, Day in Vegas, 
And then the fucking world shut down right after my album came out. January 2020? Bro, by fucking April, June, like by the time the summer, all this shit shut, shut down. And No Jumper, we were still doing the podcast and shit. And there was like, there was nothing stopping us from doing that. It's just me, Adam, and fucking Cam Girl at the table talking, you know? Yeah. We kept doing that. And yeah, basically I got that call in 2020. And, and we then started. We started how many doing pairs that. did you run on the first the first drop? I ran 500 pairs of three different colorways, though. 500 each colorway. No, no, no. Oh, you split 500 them. all together. But I dropped all three of them all together at the same time. Yeah. And Which you like ran through them? Ran through them. First drop. First day we did 90,000 on our first day. Now I'm not gonna lie to you. It hasn't been like that <laughs> ever. Like it hasn't been like that all the time. I mean, it's new but hype and everything. But people were fucking excited, yeah. bro. How many pairs do you say you do in a run for, like, say, these green ones? Like, these what green are they ones specifically, to? Uh, we probably got 100 pair of these, maybe 150. That's super limited. Yeah, exactly. For the for blacks, I think we did, like, we did more for the black, but I feel like we'd be trying to play it safe sometimes, so we'll, we'll order. It depends, you know? We get the pebble leather. Yeah, come on, man. Good pebble leather. You feel me? Well, it like mixes in nice because you see the suede and then you know the suede, the canvas, and the um, and the pebble leather is just kind of. I almost thought this was twill. Nah, man. Well, we, we definitely will switch it up. So like, the all, the navy ones are the navy ones are suede there, canvas, and then suede there. Yeah, it's cool. I like the mix. The mix. Uh, Sometimes I feel like this is the good formula though because the suede. The pebble leather and the canvas just go, just mesh together perfectly. Like That's I think, subtle. you know I what's like funny? It. I think these are all the same Pantone, but I think it just looks different yeah. on the different material. You feel me? This one might be different though. Like the, the suede might be a different Pantone. Exclusive look. It's come I mean, a long way. With the fucking green, the so, green so, crab table on the inside. Right. Because of my own doing and because of John and like our separate connections, we had a lot of different people a lot of different bigger people that were posting it and getting involved and they were like, it was to the point to where Metro Boomin, uh, uh, John and Metro have a connection. I think he helped him do his merch one time for a complex con or something yeah. like that. They've been cool ever since. When it was time to do the shoe and to pick the colorways and shit like that, I have been asking people that I was cool with, that I respect. Zach FTP was one of the people I was like sending the mock-ups to, like which color, like, and I just this decided to run. Gang. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get to this hard, bro, like, no, but like, it was like the, like, it was like the real, like, for sure, like, no, 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 like, I'm not just saying this, like, yeah. bro, this is actually fire. Metro bought all three of the, fir of the first three pair from, from the first drop and a green and white pair that we were planning on dropping after that. He bought all four of them and was posting them so much on his page that people thought that this was his shoe or his brand or he was involved in some type of way. That's a good look. That's a great look. <laughs> and get and at the time, he had I think like he had just dropped Savage Mode Two with Twenty One Savage. It was like we're, we're the one where like sense, yeah. the one where like Morgan Freeman was like narrating it or whatever, right? So he dropped that album around then. There was nothing else on his Instagram besides Savage Mode Two <laughs> and High Rollers. High Rollers. Bro. I swear to God, bro. I got so many screenshots you start and videos. Running those as ads. <laughs> running the Metro wearing, yeah. but he's wearing all the old ones up. Who gives a fuck? I know, right? I know, damn near, huh? Who gives a shit? Start running the Metro booming ads. Hey, Metro, tap in with us, bro. I need to get you some new shit too, my boy. She was packing up one of the black and white shoes, man. We just dropped these. We act, they're actually still available on the website right now. Don'tcrapout.com. Go get your pair. We're probably very running low on sizes, but go tap in, man. Very classic black and white colorway. You can mix and match this with everything. I got a, I got another pair of the black and white ones, but these, you know, these exclusive. These gonna come out a little bit later. You feel me? We have to blur that one out, like Pharrell in the, uh, in the drop it like it's hot video. You feel me? So yeah, man. Um, it's the black and white pair, man. We we, we dropped these already. We gonna drop the green ones what, after. What, what went into? Why did you switch from the Air Forces? Well, that's not even a switch. I just like I just wanted to give them something new, something different. And man, listen, I got about five different silhouettes I'm cooking up at the same time right now, man. And what so. makes these different than the Revenges that we were all rocking? Oh, I mean, well, th I mean, those are a little flat. Those are a little like they're not as chunky. I feel like this this takes this pays homage to you know a classic skate shoe. It's chunky. It's comfortable. We got a nice little grip at the bottom. You know what I'm saying? Premium suede. Look at that suede. That suede is beautiful, man. 
So you know what I'm when saying? I said, when I saw that soul for the first time, I was like, Vance fumbled and used the regular soul, but your soul matches the puffiness a little bit. Yeah, more, man. You know? And I, I, I think like once you guys try these on and have them on foot, you'll really get to see the quality and how it fits. It fits great. It hugs you in all the right places. And I just feel like the cushion, the extra, the extra puffiness on it just makes it like just it makes it stand out more on your foot. It makes your outfit stand out. You know, I got these baggy ass pants on right now, but you know what I'm saying? Like they just kind of hit your they hit your they hit your pants a little better than if you wore just like the regular like skinny version. You feel me? I think these came out really awesome. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, man. For, what, they, for what it is, I think they're really cool. Come with an extra come with an extra pair of black laces, you feel me? So yeah, man. I even want to I even want to switch up the box too. I'm not gonna lie. Hey, I was sorry, wondering. sorry for whoever uh, this size seven is. <laughs> if you get your package, it's a little them. sign you know the, the outsoles the, the on the bottom. Yo, do you got a you got a sharpie? I'll sign the box. I don't sign the shoe. All right, that's gonna be grimy. My bad and thank you. <laughs> there you go. My bad for unboxing Love HP. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. So whoever whoever bought this size seven, we appreciate you. Yeah, man. Fuck with us, man. High rollers, baby. We in this bitch. We just had like a lot of push early on from these, from just having And it was just the shoes. It was just, the I first I remember like, it wasn't even t-shirts, right? The first like three drops, we didn't have no clothes. Yeah. Which now I'm thinking back, like How? we could have turned that hundred yeah. into like 200 off the clothes. Everything's in hindsight. Everything's in hindsight. You got a lighter? Yeah. So the first drop wasn't until November of 2021. I went to Vegas. Did the whole like cosmopolitan suite photo shoot. Like I dyed my hair blonde and then we the you know, like drew the dice with flames in the back of my head. Like it was crazy, bro. Yeah, I remember that too. I thought that was a, a bold statement though, not coming out with the merch. Like you may have think that you flopped it, but it made everybody take you serious as like, oh, <laughs> he's like, not looking for a handout. I actually in hindsight now, even just saying that, you're right. I feel like it it solidified the shoe first. And I'm not gonna lie, we were kind of getting lazy with the merch. I'm not gonna hold you. Like when we started doing it, one of my like customers that is one of my friends from the fucking chat, and she's like in the mod, she's one of the mods of the chat, whatever. And one of the things that she said was when she started seeing me make like those fleeces and the nylon pill. So she was like, I'm not gonna lie, at one point you were just dropping the same logo on a hoodie, different colors. At the same time, like he, she can say whatever she wants, but there's like there's rhymes to these reasons, you know, reasons to these. And that's it was going. That's that shit was saying. going with like, with with this. And that's building the logo into someone's head. You know what I mean? Like 1, if it's always the different ones, it's kind of hard to like really stamp into pointing. someone's head. That it's crazy that you started with three pairs of sh like three different colorways. First drop. Like right after that, did you do another drop right after that, or you let it settle I think, down? I think I dropped another three pairs after that. I dropped right after the green and white. The green and white, the baby blue and yellow, and like another pair, or maybe uh, you know what you know what. Like we kept it in threes for a while. If that and makes sense. And then pretty much just just printing the logos on made blanks. So yeah, boom. We had the red, the red, black, and gray, the green and white, and then the baby blue and yellow was the next drop. Like right after it. That was in February. Yeah, the first. And then one, when did you start doing merch? Like what was the merch see, going? Because that's I, what I was gonna ask. Because it seems like lately the merch has been really tying it all together damn the first merch drop wasn't until after like the third shoe drop and then we had blazy and then blazy's whole team did uh they did this whole collection right here oh actually i remember now first three drops all shoes then we were in between because mind you we're getting 500 pairs made three different colorways it's gonna it's take wild. you like two months yeah you could get probably you could probably get a month turnaround if you do smaller quantity yeah we had two months in between I go to Blasi, they did this whole collection. We did a fitted hat, the cherry tee, sweats, hoodies, fucking jacket, all that. So we dropped that in between. It went crazy? It did go crazy. Okay. Bro, I ain't gonna hold you. There's a kid that I see whenever I go to like Complex Con or I go to this event or that He's event. Got something from no, that he guy. has this specific jacket oh, on. That, that every jacket time. is hard though. The jacket is hard. That jacket is he, hard. He was wearing this And specific. that was right before like everyone started doing the Dickies with the big print on it you like feel that. Me? Last time I saw him, so, he, he came to this kid that always wears his jacket. I've been seeing him for like two years wearing the same jacket, right? He came to the event that me and Blasey and them had uh, with Buy Myself Brick. He pulls up. He's wearing the jacket again, bro. Like the graphic is cracking and shit like that. Man, I must have reached in there and grabbed him one of the blue polar fleeces. I was like, let me get my boy right because he literally always got this jacket. He's yeah. repping me every time he goes outside down yeah. here. So I hope, I hope you see this and I hope you're wearing it, bro. Shout out to you. Also, my family's from Michigan. 
my mom specifically, rest in peace. So we had to do the, you know, Michigan colorway. Definitely had to do the Michigan colorway. Also just feel like yellow looks so good with darker colors. Like it's a good contrast. So I always, I don't know, I, I like to do a little yellow here and there. What else I got? These are all Michigans right here. It's crazy. Oh, and the, we got the Michigan skate shoe too. Oh no, that's, that's all the same one. Cause you said that the merch been going a little bit crazier than the shoes lately. Not not crazier, but like it's been doing good. What's the difference? Like what? I think the difference is just like the new designs, or like are you putting more effort into it? Like I don't like. I really think that people appreciate and they can see the effort, especially like me and my boy Leo. Shout out to my boy Leo, man. Go follow Stonebrook on Instagram. I'm gonna put the Instagram right here. Go support my boy. He also works with Hellstar. He's one of the fucking most dopest designers that I've ever worked with, bro. It's the first guy I've ever seen in Hellstar. Just saying. Just saying, bro. But listen, no, hey, listen. They designed like one of the like third clothing collections that oh, we ever really? did. With the the black and white shoes, the New York Knicks, and the uh the like Cleveland brown, like brown and orange color, bro. Oh, the, they, I do remember the, with the paws. The merch, they designed all that merch, that was bro. Hard. So shout out to Shawnee, bro. He don't do that shit for nobody. So me even being able to say that I even have a whole collection that was designed by them, like, bro, that's a fucking blessing, bro. Yeah. And it's all off of just organic connections, bro. When I started following Hellstar on Instagram and I'm talking to them on, like, in the DMs, bro, and I pulled, and bro gave me his number to pull up. Uh, shout out to my boy, Juice. I pull up, I already had bro number saved as a jeweler. I didn't even know him. This is before Hellstar even existed. That's crazy. So, yes, it said Juice Jeweler in my phone. I was like, oh, like, I didn't even know I knew this already. Like, he gave me the number on the Instagram. I already knew, bro. I think that people just appreciate effort, bro. I was really at a fork in the road in life just on some like trying to get sober, like figure out what the fuck I was doing, like trying to like take the business more serious and all that shit. You know, like honestly, I I don't think I could be at this point if I didn't meet him and he took me to fucking, he took me to Sky. That's what I was gonna ask. You think it's because you have been posting more, like they know that it's getting made in LA? Cause you always kind of got stuff screen printed, but for some reason they always I wasn't, messed up your prints. Or, or like, like, you know what I mean? Like something No, nah, it was like, it was like I, I wasn't as hands on as what I could say. Okay. I wasn't as hands on. I definitely wasn't pulling up to the warehouse. Like back then, I was not even seeing the shit. The shit was coming in to the spot and going out. Like yeah. I wasn't involved in any of that. But now that I'm, I, I think that they, they get to see that I'm like hands on with it. And like, I, you know, I'm like, I posted today, like posting like, okay, they packing the orders now. Like it's being shipped, it's, it's blah, getting blah. embroidered, it's getting, getting embroidered, it's getting made. Like they could have read the website that says it's going yeah. to take two weeks. It will be three days. You ain't posted shit. They're just like, huh, I ordered this shit a week ago and you ain't said nothing. So you got to show them the process. That's kind of why I really wanted to, I got excited about doing this channel is because I feel like a lot of people within our community know that I'm always running around and doing all this stuff. But you got to show them. Yeah, the kids don't really know how much goes on, you know? Like, yeah, I have no I, idea. Yeah. No, listen, I, I 1 million percent would not be able to do this if it wasn't for me and it wasn't for my partner. And I feel like we work together really well and we both have similar interests and creative ideas and we're just able to come together and he's he's able to he's able to help me make the business part make sense and i'm here to make the creative part make sense you feel me and we just bringing it together and that's what we're doing baby now, i'm glad that we could help you get all your stuff done through us you know i feel like that's helped a, a, a little bit with the, a little the bit a lot of it bro yeah. that should help more than you even know because it's just able for me to like make this shit serious and like really stand like like i have so many fucking ideas bro and just being able to like cultivate it push it out in a high quality way is what's fucking like the best part you feel me i rock all about. made ain't no joke yeah man so look that's why he be on my Who's ass palace of made dude that's yeah. look all this look look around you that's what i'm saying look all made right here i remember when he's he pressing fucking the damn sweatshirts with the all over prints. Yeah, exactly. Oh. How do you think I feel when I'm like watching him do this shit? I'm like, bro, I used to be heat pressing the shit in the living room no, with you, bro. 